I wave goodbye to my last customer of the evening, then set the closed sign in the window at Sun, Sand, and Tea, my seaside cafe and iced tea shop. Normally, I stayed open until 7, serving snacks and sweets to the after-dinner crowd when they made their way back to the beach. But tonight was a special occasion. The annual island ghost walk began at 7, and I needed to be at the Wharf Museum by 6. According to the time of my fitness bracelet, it was officially after 5 and I was running late. I zipped across the foyer of my historic Victorian home and into the first floor cafe where my little logoed wagon awaited. I'd repainted and repurposed the radio flyer from my childhood to match my shop's beachy theme. Then I'd put her to work. Wagon was now a pretty pale blue with curly white letters and peppy pink flowers. She was adorable and a welcomed assistant on deliveries all over town. I loaded several jugs of tea in my most popular flavors on the wagon beside a stack of boxed finger foods, then took a minute to admire the view. The cafe stretched through a good chunk of my home's first floor, filling the space from front foyer to rear deck with warm scents of buttery shrimp, spun sugar, and sweet tea. The previous owner had knocked out a few non-load-bearing walls, so the newly renovated kitchen spilled seamlessly into the former dining room and a gathering area with floor-to-ceiling windows. I'd fallen in love with the layout at first sight, then added the final touches after moving in. A little shiplap and wainscoting, fresh paint, and cafe seating had turned the open floor plan into the perfect seaside escape. I'd chosen soft shades of creams and tans, greens and blues to reflect the jaw-dropping views beyond the glass. Sand and shells, the sky and sea. With punches of orange and yellow as homage to the unequivocally beautiful sunrises I observed every morning from my deck, usually with the company of a local seagull I called Lou. I flipped off the light with a smile, then headed out to enjoy the evening. The sun had set beyond the bay on the opposite side of the island, leaving gorgeous amber and apricot streaks across my world. I hurried to the boardwalk at the end of my driveway with wagon in tow, enjoying the rhythmic thump-thump of her little tires on historic sun-bleached planks. Fall had finally won its battle over summer in charm, and the evidence was all around. Gone were the long, sunny days of incessant humidity and lingering sense of sunblock, Present were the moon at dinner time, the crunch of drying leaves underfoot, and a lingering chill in the brisk autumn air. My little coastal town was part of North Carolina's barrier islands, known to most as the Outer Banks. The sun rose over the Atlantic outside my back door and set over the sound or bay. The lighthouse-like tower that rose from the third floor of my old Victorian made views of both possible and perfect from inside, but the space was consumed by clutter, some as old as the house. And I preferred a first-hand account. I inhaled deeply, savoring the moment, then released the breath with a smile. It was good to be home. I'd left the island once, something my great aunts believed swan women should never do. We were cursed, after all, according to family tales and lore. Leaving the island was supposed to end badly for us. Never one to believe everything I heard, I'd spend eight years away, muddling through culinary school while simultaneously chasing a cowboy around a rodeo circuit. None of that had worked out, and I'd returned a couple of winters back, nursing a broken heart. My great aunts claimed that was the curse in action, but after nearly two years home, I'd come to the conclusion that curse was the wrong word. I was lucky to have a place like this to call home and blessed to have a community like mine to call family. My deep internal desire to be here and my apparent inability to thrive anywhere else only meant that the island spoke to me. That this place was part of me, woven into my fibers and present in my soul. If that was a curse, Merriam-Webster needed to reconsider the definition.